everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, subscribe, folks. Comment, subscribe, like the videos. Also, share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks, there's a link to you down below. Has a link to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there. Follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I talk back. Also down there as well as links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Listen, folks, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be talking Jets. Everything that we got going on with this football team, we'll be having a discussion, okay? Live radio show right here. I take live callers, okay? Call in. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. So with that said and done and put to the side. Ah! Come to talk to you folks today about the New York Jets being a sloppy, undisciplined, embarrassing mess of a football team. That's what I've come to talk to you folks about. Yeah, because that's what the Jets are. The Jets lost to the Denver Broncos 10 to 9. I am beside myself and I can't even believe that it happened. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. But oh, it did happen because I watched it. I watched it live. It happened. And we're going to get right into it, okay? Comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that notification bell, and give the video a thumbs up. Listen here. The last video that I did before this Broncos game, the first thing that I addressed in that video was, hey, listen, Coach Sella, you need to make sure that this team is fully prepared to go against this Broncos team, and you also need to make sure that the penalties stop. You cannot be so heavily penalized, right, going forward, in this season because good teams don't beat themselves. I literally said that. Good teams don't beat themselves. And if you're heavily penalized against the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Ravens, any of these other good teams in the league, they'll, they'll end up putting you away early and often. And also, if you give penalty yards away to bad teams, they hang around, they can beat you too. I talked about this. I've talked about that all season because we've been heavily penalized. And you would think that they would have a hold on the situation and the penalties would cease. Nope, they didn't cease at all. Didn't cease at all. The New York Jets had 13 penalties in this football game. 13! 13 penalties. They had seven at the half. Now, keep in mind, the 13 penalties that they had total for the game, they had more than that, but the, the Broncos were declining penalties at one point. Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Atrocious. The coaching was awful. Awful. Oh my goodness, it was awful. We're gonna get into that. The lack of adjustments, the lack of communication on offense between the guys as well was apparent in this game too, apparent. <sighs> Talking about the Jets offense to start the day, it started off about as bad as it could. Garrett Wilson with an early fumble. The Jets then get the ball back and the pre-snap penalties were off the charts. False starts left and right all over the place, right? Brees Hall had two false starts by himself. The New York Jets had three penalties in their second possession. Speaking of Brees Hall, he looked out of it. He's looked out of it damn near all year. Brees Hall had 10 carries on the day for four yards. I'm going to say this again. <laughs> Brees Hall, okay, the guy that we all just think the world of, he had 10 carries on the day for four yards rushing. Four. He had four yards rushing the whole day. You could clearly see that Brees Hall was off in this game. He's looked off in other games as well this season. And you would think that the coaches would go, you know what? If Brees is struggling, there's something going on. He's falling all over the place. He's not hitting the hole hard enough. Let's get the ball to Braylon Allen. Braylon Allen had eight carries on a day for 34 yards. The Jets get down to the Broncos' one-yard line. They're on the goal line. And you would think that they would give the ball to Braylon Allen at least once in that situation to try to punch it in. But no, 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 that did not happen. They ran the ball twice with Brees Hall. That got stuffed by Denver's defense. Then they turned around, tried to get cute with some pass to the right that fell incomplete. So now it's fourth down. The Jets trot back out there like, hey, we're just going to go for it. Like, it is what it is. They can't even get the darn play off because they get a false start, which pushes them back. They have to end up kicking a field goal. Just sloppy, man. Sloppy, undisciplined play all over the place. 
How is it that you as a coach don't look at this young back that you got sitting right next to you <laughs> on the bench who's been putting in work all season? How do you not go, let's put this kid out there. He needs to try to punch it in for us. How do you not do that? Idiotic. And Nathaniel Hackett, you keep getting exposed every week. Every week, man. Lack of creativity offensively, it was out of control. Now, the Jets' defense, the Jets' defense played solid in the first half. In the first half, there were some things going on, but they played solid, okay? They held it down off the Garrett Wilson fumble. They made sure nothing came from that. They actually held Bo Nix, the rookie quarterback, to negative seven yards passing in that first half. But when they came out in the second half, the Broncos made an adjustment, right? And that's when things started uh, getting real different in that second half, okay? Because the runs that the Broncos was trying to make in that first half wasn't working in the first, but they made the adjustment and it worked in the second. Williams started ripping things off. And next thing you know, they get a drive, they start moving down the field. Will McDonald lines up off sides. That helps them to continue to further their drive. Yet another penalty. And guess what? Their drive ended up in points with Bo Nix finding Cortland Sutton in the end zone for a touchdown. That put them up 7-6. to 7-6, six. Seven to six, they're up. <sighs> the Jets' offense eventually tries to answer. Trying to drive down the field, Aaron Rodgers delivers a dime to Garrett Wilson, who made a beautiful catch along the sidelines. It got challenged, but upheld. <sighs> so it was a catch. Then Rodgers drops back again, finds Alan Lazard on Denver's 18-yard line. The, the drive is looking promising, like things are going to happen, right? Lazard comes down with the ball. Everything is beautiful. Next thing you go, next thing you know, there's a flag. Like, what's going on? Alan Lazard is celebrating. After he catches the ball, he puts up the pew-pew hands. After he catches the ball on the ground, and they flag him for it. Idiotic stuff. Idiotic. Alan Lazard's a veteran player. Yet another penalty, an undisciplined penalty on the New York Jets. Instead of, instead of being at the Denver 18, now we're back at the 33. We didn't get nothing out of it. Nothing. We ended up having to kick a field goal. That put the Jets up 9-7. to seven. Denver comes back. Williams again, ripping runs. Williams had 16 carries for 77 yards in a day. The Broncos as a whole, as a whole, the team as a whole rushed for 126 yards on the New York Jets. They ended up getting a field goal out of their drive, which put them up 10-9. to nine. So now the game's in the balance, right? Jets get the ball back. We got to find some way to to take this game away, okay? This thing is getting out of control. It's been out of control the whole game. It's been sloppy. It's been nasty. We got a chance. Let's just get down here and take care of business. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is throwing footballs to guys, and they don't even seem like they know that the ball is coming their way at all. They're not looking back for footballs, nothing. They're just out there running routes. The, bo the balls are going into the dirt. They're bouncing, nothing. And then on third and 10, on third and 10, with the game on the line, okay? With the game on the line on third and 10, they draw up a play for Xavier Gibson to get the football. We have all these weapons. You got Alan Lazard. You got Mike Williams, which to me, Mike Williams was the best player on offense the entire game. He was going up there and getting whatever Aaron Rodgers threw his way. He made a lot of good catches in this game. On third and 10, for you to go to Xavier Gibson is, that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable, Nathaniel Hackett. That's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. How is it that every other team in this league can draw up plays to get their guys to football in crunch time, but we can't do that? You go to the Chiefs, you know, you know Travis Kelsey going to get the ball in crunch time. It is what it is. You look at the Vikings, Justin Jefferson, he going to get the ball in crunch time. It is what it is. How is it that we can't do that? How is it that you have all these myriad of options and you decide to go to Xavier Gibson on third and 10? <sighs> that, that ball fell incomplete. Rodgers came out on fourth down, tried to get something going, and 
the Broncos brought the heat and smoked him. He gets sacked on fourth down. Now, Rodgers, there's something going on with his hamstrings, okay? There's something going on with his hamstring because he grabbed that and he actually limped off the field um, when he got up. Now, Rodgers was 24-42. He had 225 yards throwing the ball, and he was sacked five times in this game, and he took some shots. I'm talking some real shots in this game. So after the turnover on downs, it's looking bad, baby. Broncos got the football like it's pretty much over. Well, the Jets' defense steps up again, right? Steps up again. They get a stop. The Broncos strive for a 50-yard field goal. Will Lutz kicks it, and it misses it. The Jets are back in business. We get the ball back. We're on the 40. We can actually win this football game. We don't necessarily deserve to win it, but we can do just enough to take this game away and get up out of here with a W, okay? That's all that matters at the end of the day. Aaron Rodgers comes back out. The offense sets up. They get a big pass interference call. Mike Williams going up for a football. Guy grabs him. Big flag going our way. We're moving and shaking now. Now we're on the, now we're on the Denver 36. After that, we got nothing. Everything fell incomplete. We line up for a 50-yard field goal, and Zerline misses the 50-yard field goal. Wide right. Jets lose. This was inexcusable. This was an inexcusable loss by the New York Jets. The Denver Broncos, okay, those are teams that you beat. You beat the Denver Broncos. When you have teams like this come into town, those are teams that you, you dispatch. You get up out there with a W and you keep it moving. And we couldn't do that. We looked sloppy. We looked lethargic. We looked out of sorts. We looked unprepared. And we were embarrassing. And most of all, we were completely undisciplined. And that's something that has been a calling card of Robert Sulla since he's been a New York Jets head coach. We've always been heavily penalized and very undisciplined. I don't even know what to say, man. I don't even know what to say. This is embarrassing. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you folks feel about this loss to the Denver Broncos? What are your thoughts about the coaching? What are your thoughts about what you saw from the Jets offense? How did you feel about the Jets' defense and the effort that they put out there. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. You folks have a good one. Peace.